Hello all, my name is Ashutosh Rastogi. I'm a teacher by profession. My mission is to impart quality education for all. For that purpose, I'm creating these videos. If you appreciate my work, then please do like my video and subscribe my channel so that I could get the motivation to prepare more videos. Anyways, today in this particular lecture, we will going to discuss about direct sequence spread spectrum systems. So these are the outlines. We'll going to start up with the introduction. Then we will going to discuss about the basic principles of direct sequence spread spectrum systems, which will be followed by the baseband model of direct sequence spread spectrum system. Then we will going to discuss about passband direct sequence spread spectrum system as direct sequence binary phase shift key transmitter followed by DS BPSK receiver. Then we will going to discuss some of the advantages of direct sequence spread spectrum system followed by disadvantages. Then we will finally conclude by discussing some of the applications of direct sequence spread spectrum systems. So in our earlier lecture we have already studied that in spread spectrum systems we basically combine signals from the different sources to fit into the larger bandwidth. So the idea is to expand the signal bandwidth with the help of secondary signal or we could say that with the help of PN sequence. So our goal are to prevent eavesdropping and jamming. We actually wanted to make our communication system more secure so that we should restrict the unauthorized access of communication to the unintended users. In order to achieve these goals, spread spectrum communication systems actually add some sort of redundancy. So two approaches have been used in spread spectrum modulation. Number one is direct sequence and second one is frequency hopping. So in this particular lecture, we're going to discuss about direct sequence spread spectrum. So in this particular slide, First, we will going to discuss the principle of direct sequence spread spectrum systems. So this particular figure shows how the direct sequence system actually works. It is having a modulator and a chip generator. Here we are directly multiplying our original signal with the chip and with the help of this chip sequences, our signal will get spread it out. So what is this chip generator? We have already discussed that for expanding our spectrum, we are using PN random sequence generator. So as of now, you just considered it chip is a mini bit whose bit duration is very much less in comparison to the original data bit. That's why we are calling them as a chip. So chip is nothing but it is a mini bit and that chip is directly get multiplied with our original bit. And due to this product operation, our signal will get expanded or our bandwidth will going to get expanded. So since here we are directly applying the chipping sequence to our original signal, that is why we are calling it as a direct sequence spread spectrum system. So now let us understand it through some waveform. So this first timeline actually shows the original bits signal 1, 0 and 1. In order to represent 0, we have used this minus 1 level. So this is our original bit sequences 1, 0 and 1. This second timeline is actually representing our spreading code or chipping sequences. The chip sequence here is 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1 triple 0. So this is the chipping sequence which will get repeated throughout the signal transmission. So here we could say that each bit will get multiplied this chipping sequence individually. So what we are going to get in the third timeline, we are having a spreaded signal. So we just have to multiply this chipping sequence or spreading code with our original signal. So when we are going to apply our spreading code with plus one, we will getting the same chipping sequences. And when we are going to apply or multiply our spreading code or chipping sequence with the minus one, it will get inverted. So for plus one multiplied with minus one, we will be having minus one. Then again, minus one multiplied with minus one, we will be having plus one. So this is how our spread signal will going to look like. So this is the basic principle of direct sequence spread spectrum system. So information bit is multiplied with the chipping sequence. This is what we had already discussed. Each bit is represented by the multiple bit using the spreading code. Since we are multiplying each bit with the spreading code, so it will going to take the values of the spreading code either in the same way or in the inverted manner. So this spread signal across the wider frequency band 
in direct proportion to the number of chips bit used so what do you mean by this particular statement is the signal is spreads a wider frequency band in direct proportion to the number of chips i mean if the number of chips are higher then obviously the spreading will also be higher large number of chipping sequence will going to expand our signal more and for processing gain which is nothing but the ratio of bandwidth after spreading divided by bandwidth before spreading it will be higher when the chipping sequence will be large so now we'll going to discuss the baseband model of spread spectrum system so this particular portion is showing the transmitter block of baseband model of spread spectrum system then this particular block structure shows the channel part and this lower portion represents the receiver portion of the baseband model of spread spectrum system so as we all know that any communication system will have three parts one is transmitter receiver and to interconnect transmitter and receiver will be having channel so this complete figure represents the baseband model of the spread spectrum system so what do we have in our transmitter is we'll be having a multiplier whose one input is the chipping sequence and second input is the bit sequence they will directly get multiplied and we'll get some message signal or modulated signal as mt then this message signal mt will get passed through the channel where noise like signal will going to add up to our message signal and it will going to distort our signal and that distorted signal will actually received by our receiver that is given by rt so rt is the input to the receiver so our receiver has to retrieve out the original bit sequence bt from rt so at receiver our signal rt will again get multiplied with the same chipping sequence ct as we have at our transmitting side then the outcome of this product multiplier would be given as zt which when passed through a baseband low pass filter will going to generate the output bt so how it will actually going to generate the output signal bt let us understand it through the mathematics let bk be the binary data sequence and ck be the pn sequence bk is the bit sequence generated by our information source in terms of 1010 in the similar manner ck is the pseudo noise sequence in terms of 010 so now as the first step we have to convert our sequence bk and ck to the polar and rz format and after converting to polar format they would have been called as bt and ct so bk will become bt and ck will become ct so let mt be the modulated signal by multiplying bt and ct this is what we have seen in our transmitter block structure that uh, bt will get multiplied with ct and the outcome signal is the modulated or spreaded message signal and it it has been given as mt is equal to bt times of ct so this particular figure shows the transmitter waveform at this first timeline what we have is this is our bit sequence bt 1 and minus 1 this is actually our bk 1 and 0 and we have represented them into the polar and rz format as plus 1 and minus 1 so this duration is tb or we could say that it is your bit duration then second timeline is actually showing our spreading code ct or we could say that the chipping sequence so ck is 001101 this is just for an example so this would have been represented in polar and rz format like this one minus 1 minus 1 then again plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 and this sequence will get repeated throughout the data transmission so here this mini bit duration or chip duration is given as tc suppose there are n number of chips that has been passed in a bit duration tb then in the timeline this tb will be equal to n times of tc here this n basically represents the number of chipping bits that has been required to transmit one bit information so here third figure in the timeline is actually representing the spreaded signal or the product signal mt what we have done here is we have directly multiplied this one with the chipping sequence and this minus one with the chipping sequence so one thing here has to be observed that spectrum is wider for larger n 
if we have large number of chips in the pn sequence then obviously the spectrum will be much wider or the expansion will be more so we will understand it through a figure in the upcoming slides that how it will actually be happening over here so the transmitted signal is disturbed by the interference as we had already seen that uh, in our channel noise will going to distort our signal and it will get added up to our message signal MT so the received signal RT would have been given as MT plus IT here IT is nothing but it is the interference which is additive in nature let us assume that the receiver has perfect synchronization means the transmitter and receiver both are in perfect sync in terms of chipping sequence CT so now we will going to multiply received signal RT with the CT again then what will going to happen then ZT is equal to CT times of RT so now putting the value of RT as MT plus IT multiplied with CT what we are left with is CT times of MT plus CT times of IT so now again putting the value of MT as BT times of CT we are left with C square T times of BT plus CT times of IT but we know that the C square T is nothing but it is equal to 1 since the value of C of T would be either plus 1 or minus 1 so when we are going to square them the outcome will be 1 only so that turns out to be ZT is equal to BT plus CT times of IT here BT is nothing but our original bit sequence and CT times of IT it is again a wideband types of noise so since CT times of IT has wide spectrum why we are saying so just because IT is a noise like signal or interference signal and CT is obviously is having wide spectrum so when we are going to multiply them then the obviously the spectrum will become widened so when we are going to pass through a low pass filter then it will going to remove most of the power of IT or we could say that it will going to remove most of the interference power and we are only left with this BT so now we will going to discuss about pass band direct sequence spread spectrum system where we are employing binary phase shift key so this particular figure shows the direct sequence BPSK transmitter so here initially binary data sequence DT will going to pass through the BPSK modulator whose another input is carrier signal which is given as AC times of 2 pi FCT the output of VPSQ modulator would have been written as SDT which is nothing but the modulated data sequence and the modulation process that has been used here is VPSK signal so this VPSK signal will again going to pass through a product multiplier whose second input is CT or the chipping sequence which would have been generated by pseudo noise bit sequence generator so again this SD and CT will get multiplied and through this multiplication process our signal bandwidth will get expanded and we get this spread spectrum signal which is denoted as ST so for passband direct sequence spread spectrum system BPSK modulation scheme has been used so rather than represent binary data with the help of ones and zeros it is more convenient or for the purpose of uh, modulation we have represented them in terms of plus one and minus one so to produce the direct sequence spread spectrum signal we first multiply the BPSK signal by CT so here CT is the PN sequence which could only take the values of plus one or minus one so the transmitted signal ST it is the multiplication of data sequence DT with the CT and the carrier signal A cos of 2 pi FCT so this basically represents the transmitter signal output so now this particular figure shows the direct sequence BPSK waveform here we are basically representing various transmitter waveform initially we will be having data bit DT as plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 and minus 1 which has analogous to 1010 second timeline figure actually representing the BPSK waveform which is nothing but the multiplication of your data bit with the carrier signal so SD of T would have been represented by this particular figure whenever our input sequence will going to change from minus 1 to plus 1 or plus 1 to minus 1 our continuous carrier will going to have a phase shift of 180 degree with its previous value so here 
will be having a transition from plus 1 to minus 1 here we are having this 180 degree phase shift here also we have the transition from minus 1 to plus 1 here also we will be having a 180 degree phase shift and here also so this particular figure actually showing the SDT or we could say that the BPSK signal so now the third figure in the timeline is actually showing the shipping sequence or spreading code so just for example we are assuming that this is our shipping sequence plus 1 plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 this is actually representing our shipping sequence so up till this instance this is our shipping sequence so what we are going to do is we will going to multiply our shipping sequence with this SDT and we are getting this transmitter output or we could say that the spreaded signal as a transmitter output here one thing should have been understood well that this is our bit duration or we could say that from this particular figure in a single bit duration we will be having three chip values or we could say that in order to represent a single bit we are using three chip sequences so one more important point that i want to mention over here is this st signal would have been performed by two ways one is that directly we first have to generate this bpsk signal and then we will going to multiply it with the chipping sequence in order to get this st signal or in the second manner what we could do is first we should multiply with this ct with the dt and then this product will get multiplied with our carrier signal in both the cases we will going to get the same output since both of these two operations are linear operations so we could do anything so th this is about your direct sequence bpsk waveforms at the transmitter so now this particular figure shows the approximate spectrum of direct sequence bpsk signal so in this particular figure i'm trying to show you the spectrum of our data signal this curve would have been plotted between signal energy with respect to its frequency ranges so as we know that our bit duration is tb so the bit rate would have been given by 1 by tb so the bandwidth of our information bit would have been given as 1 over tb so the bit rate rb will be equal to 1 over tb so this represent the maximum frequency or we could say that the bit rate of our information signal in the similar manner second figure is actually showing the spectrum of pseudo noise signal or we could say that our chipping sequence so as we have already said that the chip duration would have been written as tc so the chipping rate would have been given as rc that will be equal to 1 over tc actually i am using this term rc and rb just because in certain textbooks it has been written as the bit rate would have been given by rb and the chip rate would have been written as rc so obviously the chip rate would have been given by 1 over tc so this is the spectrum of our pseudo noise signal or we could say that our chip signal so in order to get the spread spectrum signal what we are actually doing is we are actually multiplying both of these two signals so we know that when we are going to multiply two signals in time domain then in the frequency domain this operation would have been equivalent to the convolution operation so when in the time domain our ct and bt signal will get multiplied then obviously the frequency spectrum of the combined signal would have been given by 1 over tc plus 1 over tb since tb duration is much larger the value of 1 upon tb will also be very much low so we could say that the spectrum of our spreaded signal will almost equivalent to 1 over tc or we could say that it is almost equivalent to the bandwidth of our chipping sequence so this particular figure is actually showing the actual spectrum of our combined signal generated by the transmitter here one point i also have to mention that if the value of capital n is much larger it means the value of tc is much lower and again if we're going to calculate the value of 1 over tc then it will also become very much larger so if the value of n is larger then the chipping rate will also be larger and if chipping rate is larger then obviously we will going to get higher frequency expansion which in turn again going to enhance the value of processing gain so this is the approximate spectrum of our direct sequence bpsk signal so i hope now you have understood that why the high value of capital n expands our signal more so the information signal has the bit width of tb 
as we had already discussed which is equal to the data rate of 1 over tb so in this case the spectrum of the signal is also depend upon the encoding technique which is roughly equivalent to 2 over tb so since the spectrum of the signal is 2 over tb so in the same manner we could also find out the spectrum of our chipping sequence that would have been calculated as or count as twice over tc so the amount of spreading that is achieved is the direct result of the data rate of the pn stream we had already mentioned that if the value of capital n is larger then the spreading achieved is much larger so this particular block diagram shows the direct sequence bpsk receiver so initially we will be having this st signal which would have been generated by our transmitter this signal will get passed through a direct sequence t spreader which is nothing but a product multiplier whose second input is the chipping sequence ct which would have been generated by pseudo noise sequence generator so after multiplication st with the ct we will be having sdt which is nothing but your bpsk modulated signal when we are going to pass that SDT signal or BPSK modulated signal through the BPSK demodulator whose second input is our carrier signal A cos of 2 pi FCT that we have used at our transmitting side. At the output of demodulator we will going to have our binary data sequence back as we have generated at our transmitting side. So this is the block diagram of our direct sequence binary phase shift key. So now let us understand the working of this uh, direct sequence BPSK receiver through some mathematical description. So at the receiver the incoming signal is multiplied with the modulator by chipping sequence CT as the product multiplier output would have been given as A times of DT CT cos of 2 pi FCT into CT. So this is nothing but this is our ST signal which is nothing but the product of A cos of 2 pi FCT that is our carrier signal dt is our data bit sequence and ct is our chipping sequence so when this signal st will get multiplied with ct so we have the relationship that ct when ct will get multiplied with ct or ct square value will be equal to 1 since ct could only take plus 1 or minus 1 so the value of c square t will be always equal to 1 so what we are left with the product multiplier output turns out to be a times of dt cos of 2 pi fct so this basically performs the despreading operation or we could say that since the product multiplier output doesn't have any term of ct so obviously the bandwidth expansion is happening due to this ct only and if we do not have this ct it means this is our narrow band signal so with this multiplication operation it basically performs the despreading or it basically converts our wide band signal into a narrow band signal so now when this signal is passed through the BPSK demodulator whose second input is the same carrier signal A cos of 2 pi FCT the original signal would have been recovered. So now we are going to discuss some of the advantages of direct sequence spread spectrum systems. So it has a very high degree of discrimination against the multipath signals. We had already discussed in our introduction to spread spectrum communication system that in wireless communication the signal propagation between the transmitter to the receiver is through the reflection, diffraction and scattering. These are radio wave propagation mechanism in the wireless domain through which signal actually being propagated from transmitter towards the receiver. Since all the signal components not following the same path to reach the receiver that is why they will going to appear at the receiver at different instant of time. Due to this at the receiver we will be having interference between the current signal value with its previous signal values which is called as our self interference and it is happening due to the multipath effect. So since our direct sequence spread spectrum signal can easily discriminate between the multipath signal therefore interference will get minimized and their performance actually gets improved. So in the presence of noise the performance of direct sequence spread spectrum is much superior in comparison to our frequency hot spread spectrum system. So it also avoids the intentional interference or we could say that jamming effectively. So although direct sequence spread spectrum signals avoids the jamming but its performance is better. So now the disadvantage of direct sequence spread spectrum are 
with the serial search acquisition time is very large which makes it slow so what do you mean by acquisition time since we had already said that we are assuming the exact synchronization between the transmitter and the receiver but here in order to retrieve our message signal back the receiver must have to synchronize with the chipping sequence that has been generated at the transmitting site so this chipping sequence acquisition as well as the tracking time tracking time means after acquiring the chipping sequence the synchronization must not alter so in direct sequence spread spectrum systems the acquisition time as well as the tracking time is much larger which makes the direct sequence spread spectrum to be quite slow so the synchronization is also affected by the variable distance between the transmitter and the receiver i mean if the transmitter and receiver both are moving then if the distance varies the synchronization between the transmitter and receiver it get altered and uh, the signal reception is quite difficult so the chipping sequence must have high rate and length is also large enough in order to make the sequence truly random so in order to get a high processing gain the chipping sequence must have high rate but there exist certain limitations that we cannot have the high chipping rate beyond certain limit since chipping rate has the direct relationship with the processing gain so obviously after certain limit we cannot enhance the processing gain so this is the major drawback of direct sequence spread spectrum system so these are some of the applications of direct sequence spread spectrum they would have been used at certain military level communications cordless phones as well as digital cellular telephony even in cdma also then for the navigation system such as our gps satellite systems we are also using this direct sequence spread spectrum systems then wlan various standards of wlan such as 802.11 a b g we are using direct sequence spread spectrum systems these are the various references that i have taken in order to prepare these slides thank you very much for your patient hearing